Hello! Today we are looking at the Keys of Mariners set, a set based on a six-parter episode of the same name, which came out in 1964. Now, this set is actually quite special, considering the figures that we have inside. These figures in question being two Vord, as well as the first companion, Ian Chesterton. The figures come in this now familiar, stylish, and collect-friendly packaging, with a lovely big window giving a few of the figures, with a kind of small window giving a decent view of the figures from above. Rotating to the side of the box gives us the same image of the TARDIS from the front, while the back gives us a lovely but weirdly CG looking view of the figures inside. Sadly, there's no behind the scenes sort of info, but there is a little synopsis for the story. It's still interesting, so give it a read. It's also quite amusing to me how the Vord labelled Vord 1 and Vord 2, kind of like them sort of demonic versions of Thing 1 and Thing 2 from the Dr. Seuss books. Opening up the box, we get a lovely little backdrop which is new for three pack figures, with a scene which I believe is based on the actual episode. With this hallway here, I believe, being based on a scene in the episode where Susan, the Doctor's granddaughter, is attacked. There's also this weird statue thing in the middle which kinda looks a little creepy. <laughs> Moving on to the figures, I'll start with Ian. And firstly, I just want to say, this is a really cool figure to have. The likeness is spot on for the guy who played Ian in the episodes, and from, like, you know, certain angles, you can really tell it's actually meant to be him. I also really like how they've done the hair on this figure. There's a sort of grey wash that's been added to the hair, and I think that really helps the sculpt to sort of pop. However, I must admit, this head sculpt is an absolute dead ringer for Castley as well. Am I wrong? Moving down to the body, it's quite plain to see that this is a reuse of the John Sim slash 2007 master body, though this really has no effect on the figure at all, as to be honest it's quite the perfect sort of sculpt for the figure, with only a minor few repaints being needed here and there, as can be seen here. The body, instead of being that black, still retaining all the creases, has been painted this lovely sort of dark grey, with the trousers being that lovely sort of light grey. The shoes maintain the same sculpt, but lose the sort of gloss helping to maintain that 60s feel to the figure. Once more pushing that 60s feel is his tie, which has been painted in suitably looking 60s colours, which seems to match the ties of the time. Interestingly though, this figure comes with a painted wedding ring, which would show that he's married to the character of Barbara, something which doesn't happen until after the chase, which would come out after this. Moving on to the villains of the set, we get the Vord, which are the second villain to appear in Doctor Who after the Daleks. Bet you didn't know that. Now, these guys also utilise a pre-existing body mould, that being the Weird Angel character from the Cause of Axos. And honestly, that's A-OK, -okay because to be honest, it's just meant to be some bloke in a sort of spandex suit. Despite looking like the same figure, these are not, with some subtle differences to separate the two, as well as two different head sculpt with two different antenna pieces. Now, I can understand this was probably scary for the time, seeing these things flipping around, except now they look quite dated, and now they look like some sort of weird, twisted relatives of the Teletubbies wearing black and white masks, except they're also in black and white as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of strange. Starting off with the head sculpt, for something that's all black, there's quite a lot of detail that's been crammed in here to help it stand out from the rest of the body, such as these lenses, which have been done in a glossy paint to, you know, give them that sort of lens look and help them stand out. There's also these fins on the back, kind of like a sight lurin, as well as these strange earpieces. And something I quite like is that there's these really nice little holes which have been sculpted on the side of the head, which are meant to be breathing holes for the people inside the suits, as well as hearing holes for the actors so that they can actually hear what's going on in the scenes. Moving on down to the torso, there's nothing new except this new belt piece with some weird rectangular pieces on it, as well as this sheath piece which is attached to the belt so that you have somewhere to store your little knife weapon thing. There's yet again another lovely little bit of attention to detail, with these silver speckles of paint meanting to represent studs or rivets holding the bits of leather and different bits of costume together. There's also new tooling in the form of these two new hand pieces here, an open hand and a closed hand. The closed hand doesn't really do much on demonstrating the webbed effect, but it does show some nice sort of veiny detail on the top. Meanwhile, this open hand really displays that sort of webbed look with the open hand showing the webbing in between each finger. 
there's also new tooling on the legs as well in the form of these amazing footwear which are basically just glorified flippers in a glossy black plastic. But despite being amusing, there is some really nice detail in here with ridges on each flipper. The dagger is quite a simple piece being painted in black and silver with some black for the handle and with said dagger being able to fit into the sheath quite nice and snugly. Moving on to articulation, both figures can do a 360 degree rotation with their heads, as well as a 360 degree rotation at the arm, a 90 degree bend at the elbow, as well as this 90 degree rotation joint which Ian sadly can't do. I've become so numb, I can't feel you there. However, Ian can do a 90 degree bend at the knee, as well as rotate his hands, albeit quite stiffly. Rick can also do a full 360 degree rotation at his upper arm. Moving back to the board, they can do a full 360 degree rotation at the calf, as well as a full 360 degree rotation with their feet. Another thing that Ian can't do! I've so numb, I can't feel you the Ford can also do this 90 degree bend to the side with their thighs. They'd be good at gymnastics. But that has been the Keys of Mariner set review done and dusted. This is quite a nice set to pick up, especially if you're a fan of the Doctor Who classic era, or if you want to, you know, maybe recreate some scenes from some of the recent comics, or if you just want some more sort of obscure monsters to try and fight other figures on your shelf. I would recommend picking it up, but sadly again, that Valix is probably being sold by some weird scalper who's middle-aged. Either way though, that's been the Keys of Mariner's set review. I hope you've all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!